Welcome to a very special edition of Building the Grenadier. After all the talk, all the speculation and all the planning, INEOS Automotive is finally prepared to let us see the exterior of their all new 4x4. So, here you go. I bet that's got you talking. Well, this is the man behind what you've just seen. His brief was very clear. Design the ultimate utility 4x4. This is a very big day for Grenadier. Yeah, it's been a few, few years of pretty hard work. This is a very exciting day because it's the first time really that everybody can see what we've been busying ourselves with for the last few years. Revealing the finished look of the car so early in its development, most manufacturers wouldn't dare do that. I think because we're not really restrained in the way that big manufacturer would. We don't have to protect a, an ongoing line of vehicles. You know, we, the, the view is that you know, we, we just need to be really open about it. You know, we'd much rather get the actual car out there, test it, like to be nice and open. Why wouldn't you be? The story about a pub in London, the Grenadier, yeah. a bunch of blokes having a few beers, and coming up with this plan to build the ultimate yeah. off-roader. Is that really what happened, or was it a much more conventional brief to no, years ago? It pretty much was exactly <laughs> that. It seemed that the sort of last of the, the proper utility vehicles were, were about to stop. There was, there was a character about them that we all kind of felt we were going to miss. And, you know, you look around and there was nothing that was, was really very appealing. And, you know, Jim being Jim, let's do something about it. And as we basically worked out what it was about the, the character of these older vehicles, what was the DNA that gave it that character. And as we understood more, you start to see why these vehicles start to look in the way that they do. You know, we, we didn't sort of set out to make it look like anything else. It was just, it was always sort of engineering led. Function always wins. Where did your influences come from in, in the way you creatively thought about the design? You know, right at the beginning, I remember saying, we've got to design something super practical, really well built. If we can think of it in, the, in these terms now, all the rest of it gets kind of built onto there. If you look at any of the older, you know, the Pajeros or the Nissan Patrols, the old Defenders, there's a real kind of un easy to understand um, sort of visual on them. You can see how it goes together. There's no sort of clever um, disguising of, of A and B pillars and it's just very logical. You can see that's that's a structural beam. That's where something fits. And so, and I think that makes it a very comfortable thing to to live with. So take me through in headline terms the design we've just seen in the exterior. It's not a very complicated vehicle. You know, it has got that sort of boxy design, and that's really a result of a, a wheel in each corner, a ladder frame, then an engine of a certain size which needs a certain number of radiators. And cooling and space for crashing and obviously all the sort of departure angles and the entry angles and all that sort of stuff which we've been tried really really hard to respect. We have a round headlight which again is about the sort of simplest form of a headlight you can get. It's almost like there's a tube that runs through and then there's a rear light which is also round as well. We've got things like this sort of built-in utility rail and things that are kind of there, it's a canvas for people to go and build upon. I kind of see it, here's a vehicle that is massively capable off-road, but it's kind of up to you to sort of go and, and make it your own, down to the rear doors that, you know, we've got a split door, we've got a really thin one that you, means you don't have to open the big heavy door, 
with a wheel on it. You can just open the little door, put your tool bag in there, close the door and off you get it. It's not a difficult, complicated route. The look is kind of interesting though, isn't it? Because clearly it has to be functional. It's got to, mm. it's got to get the job done. It's got to, it's, it's got to work, particularly for those people who are going to work it. You know, right. but, should it that, look... That's often engineer-led. So like the wheel arches, for example, you just mentioned, that wasn't anything to do with styling. That was going off with the engineers and driving this thing as, as on the most extreme off-road that they can. What's the limit? You know, how much space do we need for these wheel arches? That's what we went with. Then that sets up a quite interesting sort of design parameters there. So you're saying, well, we can't touch that because that's, that's starting to compromise the performance. So it's, it's function every time, but actually you've still got to sell it. It's still, yeah. got, to, it's still got to look good. Because it's been sort of engineering led. It doesn't mean it has to be ugly. You know, I think, again, in the same way that don't, you don't have to build it badly because it's you know, a working vehicle. We can still make it look good and interesting and really consider every square millimetre of it. I'm sure it will continue to develop and also there's the sort of pickup version as well. It's going to be following hot on the heels, I think. Oh, so hang on. So yeah. I've always had it in my head that the station wagon is going to be the vehicle that is the Grenadier. Yeah. There's been lots of discussion about, well, yeah, but hang on, I want a tipper and I want a pickup truck yeah. and I want this and I want that. Is that already, you're thinking about that now? Yeah, certainly. And uh, certainly the sort of double cab pickup is, is something that we've been working on in parallel. But yeah, certainly that's the mindset, is to make it a proper family. <laughs> because as a working tool, that is so important to, yeah. to end users. Yeah, and, uh, and I think that's part of the whole spirit of this sort of vehicle is that there's not a single use for it and people do like to to modify and adapt and, and build onto existing vehicles and so that's always been in the back of our minds. I know from personal experience that vehicles that I love very much that are utility vehicles are, have not been comfortable. I enjoy it but I have to really kind of put up with some suffering to, to yeah. get that enjoyment and why why should that be the case? Well, I think I think that was the a lot of the, the thought was that you know you don't have to make it badly, you don't have to suffer just because you're using your vehicle to go to work in. You can be comfortable, you can be dry and warm, obviously you're going to work with it, but you know if you are using it as a sort of recreation vehicle, you know, they, it's, it's still engaging and it's fun, but it's also comfortable. Um, and that was a really a, a big driver, I think. Are there elements of, of what we're looking at now that for you were kind of almost eureka moments. So much work went into that bonnet. And there's there a really good good moment on that actually where they're saying actually we need an extra two centimeters for the uh, pedestrian impact. And uh, it's all right, you, absolutely everyone's checked that we can't get the engine any lower. No, it can't be any. So well, can, can we see the engine? There's a big plastic cover on the top of it. And uh, I said, well, do we need the plastic cover? No, no, that's just how the engine comes. OK, well, if we take that off... Oh, no, it's fine, then. You can't have known when you started this how it was going to turn out. Is it kind of how you thought it would turn out? I think probably about a year ago, I thought, yeah, that, this is... It feels really right now, and it fit, and that's... Yeah, I got very comfortable with that, and then it's just sort of got better and better. Every time I go into the studio now and see it, I don't... You know, I'm, I'm really comfortable with it. We've, we've seen the clay, there's some more work to be done on that. So what happens now then? I mean, we're, we're pretty happy with, with most of it. So there's a, as I say, there's a few details that, that need to be uh, resolved yet. But also we've obviously got to do our testing, which we you know, want to do in sort of plain sight because we're, you know, we're, we're partly because we're really excited about it. I, I, I don't see any problem in, in, in kind of doing that openly and um, you know, welcoming uh, feedback and comments. And you know, it'd be great to get people to actually test it and, and drive it so we can you know make a, a truly uh, brilliant vehicle in the end. I hope that's given you a real sense of what the Grenadier is going to look like and why and yes I know what you're thinking you want to see more don't you? We'll take a look at this.